hazardous atmosphere. Flammable gas, vapor, or mist in excess of 10% of its lower explosive flammable limit, 10% lower LFL. Airborne combustible dust at or above its level. If the dust obscures vision at distance of 1.52 meters, 5 feet, or less it can be considered as at little. Atmospheric oxygen concentration below 19.5% or above 23.5%, volume. Atmospheric concentration of any substance above the permissible exposure limit or threshold limit value, TLV, H2S minus 10 parts per million, NH3. 25 parts per million etc. and marked on permit, CMSDS for other materials. Confined space hazards examples. Oxygen deficiency, less than 19.5% volume. Presence of toxic, corrosive or hazardous materials, H2S, hydrocarbons, NH3, sulfur and coke dust. Presence of flammable, combustible, Explosive or pyrophoric material, for example sludge. Restricted access, limited number of entry, exit points, for example single man way. Restricted to freedom of movement inside confined space, for example trays in towers and pipes in excavations. Falling, tripping hazards. Poor illumination, visibility, communication. High temperature and humidity. Electrical, static or radioactive hazards. Mechanical hazards, for example tank mixers, falling objects such as tools, refractory. Preparing confined spaces for entry. All personnel involved with confined space entry shall be trained in confined space hazards. Executor shall ensure entrants and attendants have valid training authorization cards passports and brief them about the hazards and precautions prior to entry. Entry authorization is an authorization only for personnel entry. Work within a confined space will require additional documents in conjunction with the confined space entry authorization, such as, hot or cold work permit, excavation authorization, etc. The validity period and record keeping of entry authorizations will be similar to other permits. All connected lines to the confined space shall be positively isolated by blinding, spading, blanking or disconnecting at nearest possible points as per the KNPC HSE document on blinding and a blinding procedure. Disconnected lines shall be blind flanged. Duly completed and signed blind list along with legible P and I diagram duly marked with blind locations shall be attached, displayed with the permit at job location. Valve closure alone is not acceptable. The confined space shall be made safe for entry by such methods as depressurizing, venting, draining, steaming, washing, and ventilating. Ionizing radiation sources if any shall be removed. Executor shall conspicuously display entry authorization with associated work permits, risk assessment, attendance sheet, blind list and rescue pre-plan at the man way. Where vessels have contained or are suspected to have contained leaded products, special precautions shall be observed. Executor shall provide an attendant whose name appears on the permit. Attendant should be trained and certified to do the responsibilities mentioned. Issuer and executor shall provide a list of authorized entrants to the attendant. Attendant shall allow entry strictly as per this list. Issuer shall display green entry allowed signs at authorized entry points, while attendant is present. Executor shall display red no entry signs or tape barricade at man ways not approved for entry and also at authorized entry point during break times or when the attendant is away. A confined space with single controlled entry point should have one attendant and one entry authorization which indicate maximum persons allowed in at a time irrespective of number of groups working. When different crafts are involved, use of a common attendant with the consent of the attendant's supervisor and common entry authorization countersigned by other executors is recommended. In case of small vessel, exchanger or small excavation etc., the need for certified attendant can be waived off with approval of KNPC safety after risk assessment as per HSE document on work permit system and risk assessment.
use of one attendant for many spaces or many man ways of a large confined space is acceptable with approval of KNPC safety, provided the attendant can effectively control and communicate with all entrants directly or through middlemen. Covering top entry area for protecting the vessel from rain and enabling man entry should be done by executor. Monitoring the space atmosphere An authorized gas tester, who has been trained, tested and certified by KNPC Safety, shall carry out the gas test using an approved gas meter. Only senior field operators or above of operation department can be certified for this purpose. In LM, safety inspectors should carry out the gas test. Validity of certification is two years. The division team leader shall maintain a record of certified gas testers and apply for timely renewal or new authorizations. Gas tests are mandatory for confined space entry. Authorized gas tester of issuing division shall fill to record results of oxygen concentration, flammable, toxic gases and other gases as applicable to the location of work. For some trenches, excavations, new sewer manways, new valve pit etc. At locations away from hazardous area, the need for mandatory gas test can be waived with approval of KNPC safety. Operation Team Leader, User Division Head shall ensure that, meters to measure the gases present in his area, are available in ready-to-use condition with the required accessories. Service records shall be maintained. Defective meters shall be withdrawn and sent for repairs. Replacements shall be arranged immediately. Gas meters shall be calibrated as per guidelines for portable gas detectors testing, calibration and certification. Gas Testing Procedure Issuing authority shall determine and record the gases to be measured and the frequency of repeating the test or the need for continuous monitoring. Minimum requirement shall be O2%, L% and H2S ppm once at the beginning of shift, work. The authorized gas tester, the issuing authority himself or his operator holding valid certification card, passport, shall carry out gas test. He shall ensure that his authorization is valid and the meter is in good condition, calibration valid and battery charged. Ventilation, blowers, shall be stopped, approximately 15 minutes in advance, prior to carry out gas test for the confined space. Initially, he shall test from outside the confined space, using a long probe. If the initial gas tests indicate a concentration above the permissible limits, Further gas freeing shall be done until the gas concentration is within the permissible limits. The tester shall carry an escape mask while testing from outside of manway, if the presence of toxic vapor or gases is suspected. Test result shall be representative of the entire confined space. Hence the need may arise to enter for gas testing at different locations inside large tanks or towers and complex vessels based upon number of manways toxic materials handled, size of the vessel, etc., for example reactors, to get a representative result. Operation Team Leader, Risk Assessment Team Leader shall decide at planning stage, the need for entering the confined space for gas testing and communicate this to the issuer. Gas Testing of Large or Complex Confined Spaces the operation supervisor slash shift controller shall issue a confined space entry authorization, describing in Section 1B the gases to be measured to the authorized gas tester who will sign as executing authority and tick pre-entry gas test in Section 4A and leave rest of the Section 4A blank. In such cases authorized gas tester certification, certification can be card or passport, is considered equivalent to executing authority certification. The atmosphere shall be treated as IDLH. Test results shall be entered on the entry authorization and checkbox ticked on the associated work permit. If there is a requirement of frequent monitoring, test results shall be entered in area field operator's logbook for record. Executing authority of actual work shall witness or satisfy himself that actual gas test has been done before accepting the permit. Executor has the right to refuse the permit if proper gas test was not done, for example filling Section 4A without testing. For critical entries, for example first entry to process vessels, 
inert entry, etc., executor shall accompany the gas tester up to the man way. Area, shift safety engineer shall witness gas test by operation staff prior to confined space first entry. Area, shift safety engineer shall cross check and register gas test results in area safety engineer's logbook. In case of any violations, discrepancies, he shall log his observations in area safety engineer's logbook. At least 13% oxygen is required to obtain an accurate low reading from a combustible gas meter. Hence, these cannot give a proper reading in atmospheres such as a vessel purged with steam or nitrogen. Hence lend O2 shall be measured simultaneously in such situations. Where atmosphere within confined space is initially made safe, but there is a reason to believe that it may become unsafe during the period for which entry is authorized, or, for example, from emission of gases, vapors from sludge or deposits contained in the space or welding fumes or inerting, continuous gas monitoring is required. A continuous monitor must be kept close to the work in progress and must be positioned so that the attendant sees and or hears any alarm. Spaces must be evaluated prior to re-entry after any break in continuous entry and satisfactory results obtained and recorded. Periodic monitoring must not exceed a two-hour period. Gas meters used for leaded gasoline shall be equipped with special filters to prevent damage to the sensor by lead, which may result in reading errors. Moisture-slash-dust filter and or liquid trap is required when measuring probe comes in contact with excessive moisture, dust and liquid. Gas test limits. Oxygen test shall be carried out first. Preferably the oxygen level quality of the air inside the confined space should be equal to that outside the space. The oxygen content of the air shall be in the range from 19.5% to 23.5% to work without an air mask. For inert entry, oxygen content shall be less than 5%. Flammable gas is measured as percent low, percentage of lower explosive limit. For cold work without air mask reading shall be below 10% low. Between 10 to 20% low cold work is allowed with air mask. Above 20% will, only inert entry is allowed. Temperature and humidity. Temperature and humidity are related to each other and do not have fixed limits. These should not create a hazard for personnel at any time during entry. A work permit risk assessment must be undertaken bearing in mind the PPE to be worn, the nature of the work and the surrounding conditions. KNPC HSE document titled Heat Stress Management Program must be followed. This provides acceptable methodologies for managing heat stress. Occupational health section should be consulted if needed. Precautions in regard to air conditioning or special clothing depending on each situation shall be jointly evaluated by issuer and executor. Prior to entry, hot confined spaces shall be allowed sufficient time for cooling. X. Eater Refractory, Reactor Catalyst Atmosphere and Ventilation Wherever possible the confined space shall be ventilated to enable entry without respiratory protection. Ventilation shall ensure the circulation the air within the confined space without stagnant pockets. Ventilation during entry should not substitute for prior removal of residual material from the space. Ventilation can be used to reduce or remove the atmospheric hazards created while personnel are in a confined space. Mechanical ventilation is preferred over natural ventilation. Air intake of forced ventilation equipment shall be from an uncontaminated location. At least two man ways shall be open in every chamber of space for proper ventilation. In single man way spaces, dropping of a spool piece, valve or disconnecting and misaligning a line from far end shall be adopted. Air suction, that is, negative exhaust, if used, should be pulling air away from the immediate vicinity of the work. Care should be taken when ventilating vessels containing pyrophoric scales to avoid spontaneous ignition. In such situation, inert entry with required safety precautions or handling pyrophoric in wet condition shall be adopted. Visibility Visibility must be considered inside a confined space, both prior to entry and during the work. 
appropriate equipment and precautions must be specified in the entry authorization. Appropriate equipment include using 24 volt or below explosion proof lamps for adequate illumination. Use of any electrical equipment above 24 volts shall have earth leakage tripping device and KNPC safety approval. Precautions should ensure the lighting used do not create additional hazards. Also lighting used should be positioned to enable the attendant to see clearly the entrance working in confined space. In spaces of total darkness, entrance must also carry battery-operated intrinsically safe flashlight, torch, for use in case of hand lamp outage. Static Electricity Equipment must be grounded where static electricity is a potential hazard or could be created by the activities in or around the confined space, for example, water washing, etc. Mechanical ventilation equipment shall be properly grounded, earthed, to dissipate any static charges. Pneumatic air movers, educators, and exhaust fans are recommended for this purpose. Electrical hazards Confined space entrance must be protected from electrical hazards arising from tools and lighting. Refer KNPC HSE document on electrical safety. Use of 24 volt or below explosion proof lamps for adequate illumination is permitted. Use of any electrical equipment above 24 volts shall have earth leakage tripping device and KNPC safety approval. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.